name is Blas Porenta. I am illustrator and concept artist. And this is pretty much what I've been doing for, well, uh, since I can remember, or even maybe before that. And here is the proof. Because um, I can't really remember when this picture was taken, but I obviously was uh, already working really hard on my future career. And um, yeah, after that, many, 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 many years later, I then entered into the um, entertainment and advertisement industry where I've been working now for around 15 years. And um, let me just quickly introduce myself through some of my works and projects that have been done in this past decade. So um, this was done for 3D Total, uh, an English client, um, one of my favorite projects so far, where I ne um, needed to redesign a classic fairy tales and reimagined it in a bit more horror way. So Red Riding Hood and Hansel and Gretchel, for the Little Pigs, and then um, jumping forward to a Japanese client, uh, Applebot. This was done for their um, playing cards, fantasy cards called Legend of Cryptids. Um, all these projects are really uh, mean a lot to me because they gave me free hands. I could do practically whatever I wanted to do. They just gave me uh, a title of the character and everything up, uh, from then on was up to me. On the left side, this is my personal project. Um, and on the right side, again, for free total, I was doing workshop for them, mentoring some students, uh, showing them my working process. And um, yeah trying to lead them towards their finished piece. This is just a sample of how I work. I usually work when I do a bigger piece, starting from scratch, uh, adding some texture scene just to give me some information so I don't start with a blank page. Um, and then starting blocking uh, uh, in some shapes, uh, characters, first in grayscale, just to get uh, the right values, tonal values, and then later on color everything. Um, and of course, at the end, uh, finishing touches with more and more textures and uh, materials. Um, again, two of my personal pieces, just for fun. And the uh, concept of a demon I did for a challenge, uh, Ian McCake uh, challenge. Um, most of you probably know uh, Slovenian rock band Siddhartha. I did uh, a co collaboration with them um, on their uh, album Saga. I did uh, the, the front page as well as they wanted me to do um, every single, uh, to illustrate every single um, song uh, from that album. And I did that with collaboration with Sasha Dornik, who is their main uh, designer. Again, lots of freedom here, uh, interpretation up to, to me and Sasha and playing around with, you know, colors and shapes. Then uh, some of my advertisement projects. Um, years ago, I did it for Lashko. Um, and uh, on the right side, a couple of images done for a uh, Mobitel campaign. Then uh, I also did um, a bunch of portraits for Good Life magazine. They want me to do uh, painted portraits instead of, uh, as they usually do, it with, um, uh, with photos uh, with people they interview. So this was quite fun as well. And then last but not least, one of my most precious projects till this date, Swamp Attack, which started um, as just a hobby, a fun project with two of my friends, Vedor Manojlovic and Tomas Zagar and uh, later became uh, much more than just that. Uh, and also, what was really fun working here uh, is because I was my own art director, so everything I did was approved immediately. <laughs> um, from, from the first draft to, to sketches, we didn't pay so much attention of, uh, to 
what is you know currently um, um, popular uh, in terms of what kind of characters, what kind of colors. Just go with the flow, have fun, and let's see what happens. And yeah, I'm really proud to say that today this app has more than 60 million downloads worldwide. So uh, a really fun project to work on. And that's it. Um, my short introduction. Now I'll be doing some painting, or at least I hope so. Um, let's jump into Photoshop. I will be probably do some talking along uh, painting, but if you have any questions, please fill up the silence. Yeah. Yeah, um, Tanya will be here telling jokes. Um, or if anyone has a question, <laughs> if anyone has a question, please just go ahead and ask. Uh, she will see if somebody has a, you know, hands up and I'll try to, to answer as best as I can. And don't be afraid, he's more nervous than you are. Yeah, look, this is my um, straight line. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, when I start working, I usually start working with a bit larger resolution. Uh, just in case that um, you know this piece needs to be printed out later, or because I can add more and more details later on. Um, yeah, so let's do because most of my paintings that you saw before um, it take me everything. It takes me everything from one day to to a whole week to to finish it. So in one hour or one hour and a half, we won't be able to you know achieve that. So what will we do here? Um, it will be a quick concept, let's say for Swamp Attack 2. I will do another crocodile and then paint it in the same style that I do most of my paintings either way. So I just, there will be lots of mistakes. That's why my, my, my initial title is mistake upon mistake because I'm doing it, you know, on, on the go. Way Easy way out, yeah. If, this won't be a successful presentation. Please do ask stuff. Um, it's 2,000 point, 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. And we're just Raise your hand and you can get the microphone. Now, yeah. Uh, when you're painting larger pieces, how do you decide if you want to st uh, start with black and white uh, values or with color? Uh, always with black and white, oh, okay. because I'm not so comfortable with working color straight away. And uh, you know, if values are working, then the whole image is working as well. So, True. Um, yeah, I need to learn that. Thanks. So yeah, and also many people think that all those pretty images at the end starts from the, the gecko. So whatever you, you know, when you're painting, that it always is look, great looking from the, the start. So you will see it's not like that. How many special brushes do you use, if any? I'm constantly searching for, oh, but not, not anymore so much. I, I searching for new brushes all the time, um, uh, you know, from different artists. And yeah, I'm also working on a separate layer so I can move, you know, um, um, around the, the, adjusting the composition. Um, I use, look, I have, plenty of brushes here. Everything serves uh, a certain purpose, but usually in my painting process, I stick to, to just a couple of them, and then if I need you know, a special texture or something, then I will use that one or create a new one. Uh, do you recommend uh, first off starting your artwork in traditional or just from the get-go on the well on digital you mean 
on the digital? I will start traditional always because I, I, I started traditionally but then move to the digitally and stick to, stuck to traditionally a bit too much, if you ask me, because I'm not so comfortable anymore uh, painting and drawing traditionally, which is always a bad thing. And if you have great, you know, fundamentals uh, working tr uh, traditionally, it will be much easier transition into um, this uh, digitally world, but it's not so vice versa. Uh, what are you thinking when you're doing the painting process? For instance, usually crocodile. I'm just head banging while listening to metal <laughs> and screaming and stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, head banging mostly. I just like la 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 la. <laughs> and just going with the flow, I usually don't have the end image in my head before I start. And that is the fun part for me. Uh, also, while you see before, there were major majority of those images were done where you know clients trusted me with everything. They just give me a a, a title or an uh, you know a name of the character or something like that. And um, yeah, I didn't need to think about the end product till the end and just you know go with the flow, see what happens. That's why sometimes. Um, the final product is completely different from where I started, which also may happen here, but we'll see. Um, do you have any tips um, for stylization, like how to approach stylizing something, maybe? I'm sorry, for what? Stylization, like how to approach stylizing something, maybe from a reference or like anything um, in that regard. Hmm. Not really, sorry. <laughs> Just draw a lot and try it. And I observe other artists uh, and try to learn from their paintings. I observe paintings uh, for hours of other artists and try, you know, to to figure out why this line there, why was uh, was he using this color in in collaboration with that color, and um, yeah, when I figure it out, I'm really happy and try to use it in my works. So yeah, I'll also do this quite a few times, which helps me, you know, to balance the, the character. If he if he's balanced, if he, you know, the um, if it works both ways, otherwise it might get crooked. And if it doesn't, if I need to, you know, rearrange some of his weight, I just do this. So more of his weight now falls down here. It's more stable this way. When I turn it around, it looks already better. If we, you know, just see this and compare it to this one, this is already more like heavy and real looking. And okay, when I have this quick sketch done, most of the information that I need for my painting process is already there. Um, I already also. Um, Many times started with sketching with a blue, light blue color, which is just a, a comfortable thing for me. Uh, you know, it's not so heavy. If I'll go straight away with black colors, many things will bother me, uh, will be sticking out. But here, the lines are really ugly, but it doesn't matter because I also may go with like something like this. Just to be more comfortable and not worry so much about the line, but just, you know, the what I'm seeing here overall. Uh, what artists do you take inspiration from mostly? Oh, this, this time now there are so many great ones that it would be completely unfair to just name a couple of names. But when I started, of course, Craig Mullins. Um, who else? Uh, Phil Hale, he's, not, he's a traditional artist. Um, John Foster, uh, I mean, so many others that I just can't remember right now. And after this, okay, I change it to grayscale. Sometimes I might clean it a bit more, put it like this so I see lines better. 
I will, I will, at home I would take time and, um, you know, clean it up. But right now I just put it to multiply. So whatever I do below that layer, on top it's still, you know, I don't cover anything. So right now I will just mask it. So whatever we do from here on, when I will go to colors, I will stay inside these lines. And also, this will help me to read the silhouette of the character bet, uh, much better. And when designing characters, one of the main thing is the silhouette. If you can read the character, you know, just seeing his shadow, that means that this is a, oops, what's happening? Uh -huh. That means it's a great character. But if it's unrecognizable, then yeah, it needs some more work. I have a question. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> How did you uh, get hired for Applebot? How did um, they, you get approached? I think that they just saw some of my works online because I was posting a lot back then. Um, I started uh, on DeviantArt, then moved to CG Talk, which I thought was a bit more professional, and um, then to CG Hub, and I guess they just, you know, lots of scouts of theirs or art directors were looking at the, these uh, web pages, and yeah, spotted me and contacted me then. How do you approach composition in your pieces? I'm sorry? Composition, how do you approach that? Proposition, position? Composition. A composition. Um, well, I start with the main uh, subject of the painting. And then, as I said before, I do everything on separate layers. So if I need to move something, I do it. I constantly flip uh, the painting when I'm working on it to just to, you know, to check if everything is balanced from both perspectives. And um, yeah, adding stuff, um, elements, or maybe just colors or, you know, um, contrasts. Even contrast and colors are um, separate elements in paintings. So even if I have only one um, uh, solo uh, character on the, on the canvas, I may balance that with some lights, uh, with colors, uh, or some other elements, not necessarily another character. Okay, just quickly fill it in. So again, just to check. And also, this navigator here is really useful. You may also a bit more you know, enlarge it. Uh, because as you know, uh, traditional artists, you can always step back, check your painting from uh, a distance, but while working hard on, uh, in front of the screen, you, you forget about that, and this uh, navigator here constantly reminds you if everything works okay from the uh, distance as well. Then I will clip, how do you say it, clip mask? I forgot. Um, uh, a new layer, this one, which means that whatever I do on top here, I can do it like this, like this, it will stay inside the bottom layer. So I don't need to worry about, you know, color, coloring uh, to the edge. And, okay, let's say the, the light that I'll be using for this presentation, let's say two lights, I'll be using two lights. One is here just to, you know, so it goes here, to, to lighten up the, the character, and one from behind, from here, to um, push a silhouette out and to, to um, create a rim light effect, which helps um, reading the character out from the background. So now I'll go with a softer brush and just put in some you know, this light. Um, hello. Uh, 
do you have a different approach to when you're doing illustration to when you're doing concept design? Illustration is much more free. Um, I have much more freedom while concept design, I'm constantly thinking about the, the task I've been given. So if this needs to be a bad, uh, an evil character that needs to be shown right away. So uh, the silhouette needs to, to show that, uh, the expression needs to show that, all the features, <clears throat> sorry, all the features of the character needs to show that, so uh, much more thinking process. And of course Hi. here it would be much less lit than from the top because here is the, the closest to the light source. How, how do you choose the lightning for a particular For this character? particular character, it is just, um, I wanna see how I can present the character at its best. So if I would do some more extreme lighting, uh, some of his features wouldn't come across. So just a basic lighting from here and uh, one from behind, so I can isolate him from the background, and that will be it. Here's some more, and then we need some shadows. And then I like to jump in with some of this, um, another layer, with a bit more texture brushes. You know, see, it's not so smooth, which will give me a great, um, how do you say, Purlago? Um, so a, a background, actually. Uh, that will um, shine through till the end. This needs to be a bit darker. This also needs to be a bit darker. And I like when it's not completely smooth like an airbrush painting, so it gives this special touch. Sorry? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but you use only texture brushes for the shadow and not for the light, why? Um, no, I will use it for a light as well. Just uh, before that, I just wanted to, you know, uh, quickly um, see how the light spreads. Now that I have the, you know, the, the borders of the, um, where the light is, I can go now in and, you know, just roughing it up a bit. Can you talk maybe a bit about storytelling um, in concept art and illustration? Um, well, uh, when I'm doing characters and stuff like that, or even my paintings, I constantly try to imagine you know, the whole world around it, not just, okay, this is a cute character, and uh, that's it, but also what is his background, why is he as it is. Um, everything needs to have some, some sort of sense, at least for me. Uh, that doesn't mean that I want to, um, you know, force my storytelling into the viewer's eye, or I mean head, uh, because I'm really happy when people come to me and say, okay, oh, so I saw this and this in your picture, and I was like, oh, great, that wasn't my attention, but at least I, you know, sparkle your Im imagination, and that works for me as well. Because most of this, you know, I'm doing for myself, so... Um, when other people see their, you know, uh, their stuff, their, um, their ideas, there are stories that works for me as well. Also, the eye needs to be, yeah, the common mistake is you always paint the, the eye, you know. It's white, not if it's not shining. It is darker because it's in the shadow part and then here just a hint of light. It will come out much more realistic. How much time do we have? Okay.
Uh, I have a question for Tanya. Can you tell us a joke? <laughs> Do no, it, just Tanya. Kidding. She promised me, yeah. Uh, no, there will be too much kidding. quiet. She will tell us a joke. Uh, who would you consider your first client like when you were starting out and how did you feel about it? I think it was actually it was Zootfly. What was, was the project like? Um, the project had been... Um, back then it was... Uh, what kind of project it was? It was actually a demo they were doing, uh, a pitch project that was never released. Um, and I've been doing some um, um, some character and weapons concepts. It was awesome, um, awesome experience and uh, awesome um, that they gave me an opportunity to to get my feet wet and to learn a lot from um, from how it's, is it working you know, in a, a bigger company, a more serious company. Because before that, I was constantly sending my, let's say, not portfolio, because before that, I even, didn't even have a portfolio. But um, I was just sending pictures to, to a couple of magazines if they need you know, an illustrator of any kind that I'm willing to do it for free, just you know, to to get started, but um, mostly nobody replied. And then out of uh, nowhere, they called me, they saw some of my uh, stuff online, and they gave me a test. Oops. And um, yeah, I start working for them. Okay, what I'll do now, because I need to do a rim light and it's too bright, or just, uh, it doesn't work. This, yeah. So I just still don't like it. Okay, something like this. So all the rim light right now will pop out a bit more. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Some artists write down special features of the character before they start uh, creating them. Do you maybe do the same or think them in your head, like no. scars and things like that? I actually don't write down anything, um, but it's just my way of doing stuff. That doesn't mean it's better or the right way. I just, I, I, I suck at writing and I suck at talking, as you can see. But um, I just like, you know, imagine stuff and then put it down. I will do a bunch of sketches, a bunch of um, tryouts, and imagine the story and uh, the features of the character in my head. So it's lots of color picking from colors um, around and insert them and using them. Uh, if you have pro a problem with uh, making with making an artwork, so basically if you are commissioned and you have no idea what to draw. Do you have like some sort of a process to get the idea? <laughs> yeah, waiting for the deadline, and then the <laughs> adrenaline kicks in, and then something came, uh, comes up. Can That's, relate. Yeah, I think we all can. So I'm just trying to figure out. This is also one thing that uh, is in my title of this presentation, Mistakes Upon Mistakes, because I know where the light comes in, but I'm, I can't do it on a first stroke, you know. I just, you know, paint, 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 and see if it works. And if it does, okay, great, I'll stop and go and move forward. Otherwise, I will just try, try, to, okay, this is now too dark, so let's, you know, let me pick that up a bit. Here needs a bit more of this to become more uh, round, and then also like this, okay. Some more shadow part here. 
too dark for lighting up. So this is the whole process of my everyday. So I got one question from a member, mm -hmm. and um, he was wondering about your freelance career and what was the weirdest job you got. Weirdest job? <laughs> wow. Define weird. We we all have those, won't we? Which what? Weird jobs. No, the weirdest the better actually. You know, we really can do something completely different than everybody else, that's usually the, the best thing. But I can't imagine the, what would be weird. Okay, then did you have a nightmare client maybe? Of maybe. course. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, when even they don't know what they want, but they think they know. So they're constantly changing their minds. Um, they're trying to to make you do um, their vision, but they don't have a vision, so it's just a process of you know forth and back. And uh, at the end, of course, the product is all over the place. Not too light. Um, okay. Just put it closer. To Hello. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe more about this uh, career stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So like you, you said, uh, you showed a bunch of uh, projects that you did for free. Uh, but this is kind of a romantic idea that, you know, you are the artist and you work for free and everybody loves your work and so on. Oops. But still, of course, you have to get paid. So maybe not how much, of course, but uh, do you have any, um, like, what are your experience with... Slovenian clients, uh, foreign clients, um, um, maybe some of that. Yeah, uh, well, a good thing that happened to me was that I got approached uh, with a cool manager and he took over all the bureaucracy, talkings, um, price uh, talkings and you know stuff like that. So all I do was just draw. And uh, before that, okay, I won't say for which clients, but you know, I was really happy. So somebody asked me, okay, how much for this one? For, um, okay, one, my, one of my first stories working for agencies um, when I didn't have a, uh, a manager was they approached me and okay, so we would like to buy this painting from you for this campaign for uh, some car company, car, car brand. And I was like, oh, great. Back then, they were dollars, not even uh, euros yet. And uh, they asked me, okay, so how much do you, do, you need for, uh, do you want for this? And I was like, what is enough for you know, uh, a young student? And I was like, okay, so $50,000. And I was like, immediately, okay, done. And I was like, damn, it was too easy. So they called me again one month later. So how much do you want for another painting? And I was like, 75,000. Like, they were like, okay. And I was like, oh, still not enough. And then again, a couple of months later, the same uh, ad company called me, asked me, okay, so how much for this painting? And I was like, 200,000. I was like, okay, we'll call you back. And I said, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned how to you know, upon mistakes, I learned how to uh, price my work. But then even later, when I got my managers, I was like, okay, for one specific um, uh, painting, my manager asked me, okay, so they called, they want to know, blah, 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 this, this, how much do you want? I was like, 1,000 euros. And he, okay, we'll try to do something. They came back, okay, we got you 4,000 euros for that one. I was like, <sighs> awesome. So, yeah. I, I'm shit yet um, knowing numbers, so my advice would be try it on your own, see how much the client, you know, um, um, how do you say, that's any. Are ready to pay? Uh, or you, you can actually ask them for their budget. 
first. They won't. They won't tell you the, the truth. Never. That's true. Yeah. So and then maybe you know get a good manager and the one that knows how, you know, what are the prices, because those bigger clients they have a great budget, but uh, they of course want it for themselves, not for the artists. So. But if somebody knows how to talk to them and know, you know, the industry, they know then uh, what they can expect and how to, to make a deal. Okay, so enough of this uh, black and white. I will jump in with how do I color stuff now. So for the background, um, let's make it uh, a simple blue. I use color. Is it called now? Situation color. Uh, can I ask a question before we start coloring? Sure. Uh, what was your experience uh, with Applebot? Uh, I mean, uh, working with them, uh, like talking to their art director, and uh, usually I have an information that usually they uh, expect, like, uh, I don't know, uh, two, uh, two, two, two pieces in a month or maybe in two weeks. Uh, so, what, what, what is your experience with, with um, them? They gave me too much free hand, if you ask me. They said, okay, do that. There is a, a title of the, uh, a name of the, the character, and take uh, how much do you think, do you, how much time do you think you need? And I was like, damn, I'm really busy right now, so um, working on other projects, maybe, I don't know, a month or two months even, and they were like, no problem, just take your time. And that was the biggest mistake. Because I took my time, I spent working on, on one image for two months and another one for three months. And I was like, okay, so that's it, but they still called me back. And then I took a half a year for two more <laughs> paintings because they were like, yeah, really good. Yeah, no worry, no worry, just take your time. Um, I, you know, provided them with uh, a sketch, um, and then uh, they approved it or not approved it. And they gave me some comments, and uh, yeah, I mean, they were one of the best clients. I must say that. Um, so, how many uh, paintings did you do for them? Um, I did two cards, which is four paintings, because each card has. Um, uh, a regular version and uh, advanced version of the character. Did you ever try uh, Magic the Gathering? No, because it didn't call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard it's really hard to get them, um, and they have so many great, awesome artists there. That, and also people that want to to work for them. That uh, I guess, yeah, you need to be one of the top. I don't know, but did you try? No. Um, I'm. Do you, you need a push? Sorry? Do you need a push? Um, not really. <laughs> I'm quite comfortable what I'm doing right now. So, um, I mean, of course, it would be a great, uh, great name to have in my resume. But then again, uh, at the moment, I'm trying to do some of my new personal projects. And uh, let's see what happens. So, yeah, what I'm doing right now, I use color mode and I use overlay mode to, you know, block in some colors. Maybe to, to lighten up a bit on some places where it needs to be. Oh no, this is color, sorry. This one, yeah, that's it. And of course, because we also shouldn't forget about the bounce light from the below. No, too strong. makes it much more three-dimensional because of that. How did you learn to paint? Like, what was your process? Just constantly do it. Um, no matter what, just, you know, having fun, trying new stuff. Um, uh, observe other artists, how do they do it, uh, steal some techniques from them. 
and but not just copy them. I never wanted to copy anyone. If I, you know, um, watch a tutorial they did, I did it on my own character with uh, similar techniques. That's why you're you're forced to think about what you're doing. If you just copy what uh, each line that he does, you're just copying it, and the, there is no thinking process behind it. But uh, if you if you're forced to you know um, to 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 be faced with your own problems, then you learn. So he's a bit tired. So a brown thread around his eyes. Um, when you are drawing for a week or for a month, do you organize your layers or name them or? Nope, it looks like this and it goes on and on and on and on and on. So I got around 500 layers, but of course I merge it uh, in the process, otherwise my computer will die. But if I need to do something for uh, a client that needs to, you know, have a character uh, that is, can be separated from the background, then I organize everything a bit more, of course. Otherwise, I would need to cut out everything later on, and that's a pain in the ass. What uh, is the difference for you between in-house work and freelance work? Like, what were the pluses and minuses, pros and cons? Great. Uh, pros for working in a team is you learn quickly, much quicker. Uh, yeah. You are surrounded with artists, which, which uh, gives you a boost. Um, and you socialize, which is also great. And then uh, when working from home, you have your own schedule. So right now, when I'm a freelancer again, I'm working from 11 o'clock in the evening till 3, 4 in the morning. That's my usual um, working time. Thanks for coming today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it's special, yeah. <laughs> so after that, okay, the shirt needs to be a bit different than him because right now it looks the same color, so it's making a pink shirt. Uh, how do you stay motivated while freelancing from home? I mean, how do you not just stay in bed all day? And how do you do? How do you get your work done? Can I answer that? Sorry. Yeah, do that. Yeah, she will answer it. Deadlines. Deadlines. <laughs> no, but also, yeah, it's hard. Many times, I, I admit it's very hard. Um, especially if you're working on a project that you took it just, you know, because of money, and you get nothing out of it. I mean, you know, no pleasure, uh, no challenges. You just like, you know, something for a, for a poster. But, but not a, uh, that came out wrong. Um, if, if, um, sorry, I just saw something here that needs to be done. Um, yeah, you just, you know, need to push yourself and love doing what you do. That is the main thing. If you don't love what you're doing, then it will be harder and harder and um, you will find excuses what to do instead of painting. But if you still you know, find challenge in doing this, then challenge yourself even further. So yeah, right now I jumped on uh, top, of, uh, top layer of the, the outline I did. Um, without it, because it's not a clean, um, I mean, even though it's not clean, it will serve me well, because without it, you see, I would need to go in and paint those um, um, edges that are here already. So I will just close up and I will hide some of this paint over it. And what that also do is um, give this painterly feeling to the paint, the, to the image that I really like, because I always, um, I always um, was really amazed by um, traditional artists, traditional painters. And even though I'm working digitally, I try to, you know, at least put something 
some of their qualities in my paintings as well. Mm. I would like to ask you about, um, you've been to THU, Trojan Horse was a unicorn, for those who don't know, this is an art event in Portugal. It's, it lasts for five days or so, and it looks similar to this, only probably a lot better. Um, and uh, I'm interested in your experience and also your experience um, and maybe... Um, I mean, yeah, I would uh, say IFCC just, in Zagreb. I mean, go to as many of these events if you can, because um, you will at least get inspired, I hope. At least I did, especially last year when I went. Um, there were like around 700 artists plus mentors on that island. And you had nothing better to do than just draw and communicate and, you know, uh, talk about your experiences and then um, getting new contacts, which is also great, especially for further uh, projects, clients. So, yeah, I would just say go if you can. So now you see it's really rough. Everything is, you know, a bit messy. So I try to clean it up, but still not polish everything. Add some texture. And again, try to think about the light, where it's coming, how it reacts. So this one, this side, would be a bit more light, that one a bit darker. And then that goes for everything. And I color pick from the image itself. I don't want to, you know, try to guess what kind of colors will be here, because I have so many uh, different variations of green and brown and stuff like that, that I just find the right one and bring it, you know to another one, to another place. I'm just covering up these outlines there, this sketchy stuff, but also um, leaving some of that in because it, you know, it gives a touch to the to the whole painting. So, what was the longest time you ever spent on a one painting or illustration? Um, those were paintings done for different challenges uh, because, you know, the challenge, uh, the deadline for the challenge was like in four months or five months, and I took time. That doesn't mean that I painted every day and spent time every day on uh, that painting, but it's also great, you know, leave a painting be for a, for a week and then come back to it and sit with fresh eyes, see what needs to be done, what doesn't work, what works. And I, as you can see, I jump all over the place because here, if I don't know how to, to go on here in this particular one, this corner here, so yeah, it doesn't work. Instead of me getting frustrated uh, and spending like a whole hour just on this wrinkle here, I say, okay, fuck it, go to this one because it's much more rougher. I'll block in some shapes and it will, I will come back to it later. And maybe it needs a bit, a couple of teeth. So let's put in some teeth. 
Uh, how do you transition from this painter style to a more clean liner one? Because I also do this like sketch, paint under it, paint over it, and never do like clean lines. Um, sorry, could you repeat that, please? Uh, yeah. How do you also do like clean line art, which is just you know uh, very crisp lines, and then um, work with them instead of a sketch? Yeah, it depends yeah. on the style that I want to the, the final painting want to be. So as you, can, as you saw, um, stuff that was done for uh, Swamp Attack, mm. it is really simple characters with simple, uh, this is just a, pre a presentation painting. So I can block in more details. It can be done, uh, I mean, character like this can appear in, in uh, the mobile app. So depends on the, the project I'm working on. But stuff like this, what I'm doing right now, it's the most fun for me because I don't need to spend so much time um, concentrating on each and every line so it's perfect and smooth. And Because I have uh, OCD problem, and then if this line, okay, now it's not good, now it's not good, now it's not good, and then that, that happens for an hour. But here, you know, yeah, a little bit of here, a little bit of there, so we have this teeth, okay. It will cast some shadow here as well. So it becomes part of the croc. Do you only use Photoshop or do you use also any other programs um, for painting? For the majority part, I use Photoshop only. But uh, in my paintings, I also use um, Artrage for the last 5%, let's say. I can't really paint in Artrage because I don't understand all the brushes, but those I do understand, I use it as uh, bringing some textures which I think is the best program, the best software to, to use for, um, to, to, to make the painting look closer to traditional paintings. So do you still study um, these days or once you have too much client work, you stop learning? Um, you should never stop learning, but yeah, when you have when you're overwhelmed with projects, that sometimes it's hard to you know go back to uh, to the start. But right now, I'm thinking about. Uh, our, I mean, I already booked another uh, schoolism workshop where I'll be learning with uh, I forgot his name then uh, one uh, Disney artist. So yeah, always learn more. Never stop. Otherwise, you know, I mean, right now we have Photoshop and stuff like this, but who knows what will be in, in, in the near future, especially with VR projects coming up, what kind of software you will need to know to, to be um, relevant in the industry. You mentioned schoolism. Um, this is online education. Do you, um, is it compar comparable to Slovenian education? Not really, because um, they're much more specialized in, um, you know, giving you a specific knowledge, specific tests, specific um, classes, uh, which you can then apply um, in, in the industry today. Because in Slovenia, we, at least from uh, my knowledge, we don't have this kind of uh, education programs yet. Do you plan to have any workshops or tutorials? No. Not in the near future.
You have uh, 30 more minutes. Oh, good. So if you want any music or something. No, it's okay. Uh, now that you're in detailing phase, how do you manage your details? When is the image done? How do you um, organize? Don't know really. When it feels right. When you can, you know, this one saying, when you can't add anything and, or take away anything, then I guess it's done, but it's hard. I mean, it's much harder in reality, of course. Um, I don't know. If I look at it and say, okay, this tells enough information, what I wanted to say, then it's done. And I don't want to, you know, overdo uh, stuff or too much. Uh, today there are a lot of channels through which you can market your work. Have you ever thought about doing some personal project through Kickstarter or Patreon or some stuff like uh, that? We thought about it when we were um, doing this Swamp Attack. We were thinking about, okay, so what would be the best? After we realized it is much more than just you know a hobby project. Um, so let's make a best out of it and how to market it. And we were also thinking about, yeah, the Kickstarting, Kickstarter campaign, but were then contacted by, uh, by Outfit7 just in the right time, and uh, they said they will publish our game, so we stopped thinking about that. But I'm really not uh, an expert of, uh, on marketing, so I, I don't know what to say here, what to advise you. I never tried it. Um, apart from just thinking about it, so but as you can see, I mean, many Kickstarter campaigns are really successful, but I also heard that it's not just just about the luck in the project, but also the marketing behind it. And uh, a specialized companies um, are there that help you boost the Kickstarter project. So I advise that people that are thinking about that uh, also think about you know, hiring uh, a, uh, a company that takes um, that part of the challenge. What do you hate drawing? Sorry? What do you hate to draw? Ooh, robots. I really suck at doing uh, um, metal and then uh, just the design of the robots. It, it's not close to, to me. I, I love organic stuff because whatever you do, you can always say, oh, it's a, it's an, a pimple, it's a, you know, it's uh, just something gruesome and it's slimy and yeah, it looks cool. 
But when designing robots, you need to know what you're doing. And that means that you need to know uh, before you start working on the, the design, which I'm not really good at. So here is some bounce light from the ground. And again, I don't know what exactly core will fit here, but I'm just trying, picking stuff from surroundings and see if it works. If it doesn't, just try it again. Hi. Uh, you mentioned schoolism workshops. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other uh, recommendations for courses that you really liked? I tried also Siege Masters. Uh, it was okay, but then I also take, took uh, schoolism and it was just so much better, gave me so much more knowledge and, and insight in, in the industry that uh, I can, for now, Clearly recommend uh, schoolism. Um, I mean, CG Master is okay, but it is almost the same money, and uh, I just prefer the schoolism so much more that I suggest you take that. Apart from that, I, I don't have any other experience uh, of online schools. Uh, you went through all kinds of different educational systems. For what would you say, if you could go through all of it again, 
which was what was the best education that you got and what would you recommend like people starting out from the fresh um well i did some courses when i was a kid they sent me to those you know kids schools where we just draw draw as much as we can um and then uh, academy for fine arts um which is also great. I haven't finished it. I mean, I won't finish it. I know that by now. Uh, but I spent a whole four years there and took as much as I could out of it. So I just, at the end, figure out that um, too much um, projects that I'm working on uh, gave me much more than the you know the final exam and the diploma, the paper. So I stuck with project instead of finishing the school. But I wouldn't, uh, if I do it again, I would go to academy uh, again in a, in a blink of a second. Because um, there were a couple of professors there that didn't care about me doing digitally or traditionally. They just, you know, um, taught me uh, the best they could. There are some uh, professors, of course, old school professors, that prefer working only traditionally and uh, don't like anything that has to do with digitally. But who cares? You just take whatever you can from the, the school. And that school also has uh, some really cool professors that can help you and you know elevate. Um, that was that, and then those online projects. But the best school, in my opinion, is of course uh, working on projects, real life projects with real clients, because no no school other than real life can prepare you for that. And many schoolmates from um, from academy, or not many, some, uh, they were um, solely concentrating on uh, school projects not working uh, aside, and that showed at the end they were unhirable. Because at the end, nobody cares about uh, the paper you have, but only what you can do, especially these days. So yeah, working from on real life projects, even if are there, you know, if you're working for free, just learn how to, to deal with clients, uh, to deal with deadlines, and then, yeah, that will prepare you the best. Hey, uh, there is trend with some concept artists also going into 3D and maybe do a quick sculpt in ZBrush and then paint over. Do you feel there is a pressure for concept artists to also learn it, and do you also have any I plans mean, to do 3D? The more than you, do you know, uh, you know, the easier it will be for you. So, uh, yeah, that is one thing that I would like to know and you know, maybe take time in the near future to learn something about at least basic 3D stuff, uh, which would help me a lot, of course, especially when doing architectural stuff and um, cityscapes and stuff like that, concept, uh, environment concept designs, because you just, you know, block in some cubicles, do, do some stuff uh, in 3D, and then paint over it in, in uh, 2D for, for the final product. Um, but if you don't know how to use 3D, as I don't, then yeah, you need to figure out uh, the perspective, the lines, if everything works, and if it doesn't, what that doesn't work, and uh, it can be a bit frustrating because of that, yeah. So, I mean, use as, much, uh, as many tools as you think it will help you achieve the, the, the final goal. Uh, hi. hi. Uh, 
What kind of uh, Wacom tablet do you prefer nowadays? Um, Cintiq. So this, a funny story when I uh, went to uh, Vienna to an uh, animating studio uh, while I was still working for Output 7. Um, and I brought with me this um, Intuos kind of tablet and my PC so I could work there as well. When I entered their studio, all artists had Cintiqs. And they look at me and like, oh, so you're like a traditional painter. And, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, haha, very funny. And uh, then I tried it. I really don't, didn't want to tr even try it because I thought the, the lag thing was the issue, the, the glass thing, the thickness of the glass, you know, you don't see where the tip of the, the pen is all the time, and that, that would, you know, uh, limit me in my work. But when I tried it, yeah, I uh, immediately bought it then. So I'm working on Cintiq back at home now. And this is like a nostalgic thing right now. So this is basically it, how I work. Jumping here and there, um, trying to figure out stuff uh, on the go. Hi. Hey. Um, this painterly style you have, uh, it's really hard to achieve. Will you be able to demonstrate this final five, ten percent you do in art range? I don't have art range here, but, um, hmm. and I'm also using in uh, to, to achieve this, you know, that canvas texture because you might use a, a, a brush. Here is one sample, just this one, I think, yeah. So you see this. It, oh, sorry. So this brush works like this, and you can go all over the place. And if I then, you know, just do it smoothly like this. and then put it an overlay, you see, you get a texture on top of uh, this. But, you know, just do it like this quickly, it would look fake and, and cheap. So what I do then is erase a major part of this. So only a couple of, even better, with this one. So there are smooth transitions. So only on some places you will see a hint of the texture but it won't overwhelm the whole painting. So this is one way of doing this. And then you also think about it. So where the, the least amount of paint, where the, the paint is least thick, the more texture will, will pop out. And that's usually in the dark places. But when you, you know, put layers and layers of real paint on top of that, that part needs to be um, covered completely, so no, no, um, no, 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 this texture should pop out. So lighter places, I go then on top of it once more, just to, to add this thickness. And on darker places, I leave the texture there, and light places again, pop out some stuff. That comes out from studying uh, old traditional masters and their paintings and try to figure out, you know, the whole logic behind uh, traditional painting and how the, you know, colors and paint works in real life. Then you can apply it and fake it in Photoshop. I mean, yeah, I can do this for another 15 minutes, just, you know, putting details here and there, but I'm not sure that this is quite interesting for you guys. Uh, so any more questions? Any, anything? Uh, what kind of exposure did winning online uh, challenges give you? Uh, some. Not like 
uh, nothing big really. If you don't win, you usually don't get that much exposure. But what those online challenges give you is uh, the whole community, you know, working together, knowing again new people, even though only online. Um, I met some great friends, online friends now, and artists that we we stayed in touch. And then, you know, again, when a project, a new project uh, comes up, um, you know who to, co to contact. And again, people, you know, commenting your stuff online, um, it gives you a fresh perspective on your work. So, um, allow that. Don't, don't close yourself and think that you're the best and that nobody knows shit. But just, you know, listen to people. Even though, I mean, you can't, of course, apply all the comments, all the criticism or all suggestions into your paintings. Otherwise, one would say green, the other one would say red is better, and you, yeah, you're stuck in the middle. But just, you know, take everything in, think about it. Even though thinking about it, you know, it's, um, it challenges you and it brings you some new answers that you can, you know, then later on uh, apply to your uh, new paintings. Any more questions? Um, stuff from everyday life, a joke. Um, of course, other artists, um, not in terms of, you know, as I said before, copying them, but finding a challenge in their paintings and try to apply the challenge into my painting. And, um, you know, when you see a good work online, you say, well, how, do you, how did uh, that happen? What did he do? Um, and then challenge yourself doing maybe a similar topic uh, or similar style and figure stuff out and uh, new stuff out and learn. Uh, you ever do any uh, more studies like plain air studies or maybe traditional with brushes and stuff? Um, no, not really. Um, I'm doing lately some, um, you know, drawing, uh, model drawings. A bunch of friends gather around, we get a model and do sketches of that model. Just, you know, you, you practice anatomy. And um, also the good thing about that is that we don't, you know, we don't uh, spend too much time on each sketch. Let's say we only uh, spend a half a minute to, to draw a whole figure or maybe up to five minutes. And then you're forced to, to, you know, to pick up, pick out what is important uh, to show as, as much as you want to. And that, uh, you know, pushes you away from going into details too quickly. Because if, as you see here, um, I started with a quick sketch, then applying values, tonal values, and if, at that point, even with tonal values, I would start, you know, um, deciding how many wrinkles uh, he has under his eye, uh, how many scales will be visible. Um, I will be stuck on this particular um, um, area for a couple of hours, and then when I will zoom out, everything would be ugly, unbalanced. Um, so yeah, work as a whole all the time and pick out what is important and what is really not for the overall image. There is another question. Zdravo. Ciao. A many persons anima asidilo kushne project. Ah, sorry. Did you do any projects for the movie film industry? No, I only did a, uh, a concept or two. I can't remember. Right? Yeah, a couple of concepts for uh, stop and emotion movies. But working on a full feature movie or a movie, 
Um, no, I haven't yet. So what have you been doing lately? We haven't seen any of your projects, like newer pictures or paintings out for many years. So do you keep them hidden or is that something that... I've been working on a, a bit bigger projects that I couldn't show, especially while working for uh, Equipa 2. Um, it is a part of a, you know, there were done many, many sketches, concepts and stuff like that, but you can't really show that. Um, and then personal projects, no, I mean, I did some stuff, but I'm just, you know, not feeling like sharing it right now, maybe because I don't like it so much. It was done for a client and for a project that I am not happy, not with a client, but just the, the whole project wasn't something I was really proud of in terms of what I came up with. Um, so I thought, okay, it's always, always better to show less, but just good stuff than show everything. And then some sketches and stuff like that, I just don't feel like sharing it because I was just doing it for me. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, what's that magazine called uh, that you did portraits of famous people for? Um, uh, Good Life magazine. Good Life. Yeah. Um, so, I was wondering because this is an editorial illustration, you know, and mm -hmm. did you maybe notice that more of illustration is coming back into magazines or was that just a... To be honest, I don't follow okay. any magazines and stuff like that. Was I that just... your idea or was it theirs? Theirs, theirs. They called me a while ago if I would do portraits. First, we were thinking about just uh, classical painting, uh, classical uh, pencils, uh, illustrations, drawings. But then I was, I was just done with um, Mobitel campaign, where I really liked working um, in this more scattery painterly style. So I suggested if I can do it, I can continue work like this, and they agreed. So yeah, that's about it. We have five more minutes. Um, sorry, mostly wait. Yeah, I mean, at the end, the last five percent, because I, as I said, I don't understand the painting process there. The, all of those colors mixing together on the canvas, uh, I didn't have enough control to, to feel comfortable working there. But um, yeah, for last couple of, you know, when you have, I'm not sure, I don't have, of course, um, brushes like that here, but just at the end, you know, if you do this, and then this, and here, and here, and then, you know, putting together background with the foreground, merging that with some of these brush strokes, and then deleting where you don't need it, it leaves those marks, you see? Those painterly marks that I really like. But again, you should be careful where to use it. Otherwise, we really just, you know, everything will be like this at the end. So, see where it goes here, okay. It works, just a, a couple of spaces. So I delete everything else. Where else? Here, okay, I don't want to have really sharp edge here. So I smooth it up with uh, this kind of, um, Rough brush here. So, how do you decide on these areas? Uh, Jeff, it, if it feels right. I mean, if I don't want, if something is in focus, let's say this, this is the main focus, is his eye, of course. I would need to pop it out maybe a bit more with uh, contrast, with colors, maybe with some highlights. You know, sometimes little stuff like this, just putting some highlights, and you see it's really rough all over the place, but you, when you zoom out, if you work on a high resolution, it sort of works. When you go in, 
And you know, just I will use overlay because it will help me um, preserve the colors, but just lighten it up a bit like this. Okay, so this pops out a bit more already. Then let's make a hard, a bit harder highlight here. Why? Okay, so this. And then come back, come out again. Okay, it's too strong, so let's do it like this. You see, it's starting to pop out a bit more as before, but it's really dark. Now it pops out a bit more, more attention is in this place. And that's how, you know, control the viewer's eye around the image. So basically you use it just to draw the attention. Right? Yeah, yeah. And when I don't want attention, okay, what I've done here, uh huh, this one. So I, what I don't want for then is, you know, this part is not that important. So I don't want this to be really sharp. Or maybe I do. I will see if it, you know, it works or this one, or, you know, the tail is really not important there. Maybe it's too strong, it, it, it pops out too much. So we'll just, you know, push it a bit back. It may be done with a really small brush, a uh, soft brush, sorry, like this. So it goes back, okay. Here we have mo the most contrast. So this is the most important. The, the viewer's eye will go here. He will recognize the character from here. And, um, okay, then we have this place here, which is really not important. So let's just, you know, soften it up a bit with a couple of these brush, rough brush strokes. It won't be completely smooth, but it will blend better in the background. Do you ever use smudge for blending? No, no, I use brushes for that, brushes and uh, eraser. And with that, we're finished. Please give a huge round of applause for that. Thank you.